these notes are going to recap how we graph inverse variation. This first function, y equals 1 over x, is what I might consider a parent function for inverse variation. Hopefully we remember from class that we have two asymptotes. We know as x is getting really, really large, y is approaching 0, which gives us a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So let me just list the asymptotes here. If we also think about what numbers we can and cannot plug in for x, we realize that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. x equals 0 is not in the domain for our function y equals 1 over x. If we try to plug some points in, I like the point 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. Notice both of those points satisfy the equation y equals 1 over x. I could also plug in 5 and get y equals 1 fifth. That would be like down here. I could plug in y equals, I don't know, or x equals a half and get y equals 2, something like that. What we're going to generate is this kind of shape. We have in this first quadrant kind of a positive arm or branch. And in quadrant 3, this kind of negative arm or branch. And they're supposed to be smooth. I guess I didn't do the nicest job there. But we have two kind of arms that create, that make up this function, y equals 1 over x. That's our parent function, so we can do all sorts of things. I can, of course, make it negative. We saw what happens there. Or we could shift it. Notice the red function here is shifted to the right 3 and up 4 units from 1 over x just by looking at what happened to x and what happened to y, essentially. So let's think about where our asymptotes would be. If our vertical asymptote moved right 3 and up 4, our new vertical asymptote would be at x equals 3. I'm going to graph it on the same set of axes so we can actually see the shift. Our horizontal asymptote used to be y equals 0 from the parent function, but we moved it up 4 and also to the right 3, but the right shift didn't really affect the horizontal asymptote. So we had y equals 4 because of that up 4 shift. I had the same pattern. I had, I went, um, I had the point 1, 1, which kind of translates right 3 and up 4 to this point right here, and negative 1, negative 1, which translates over there. You can also kind of look at the pattern right 1, up 1, from where the asymptotes intersect. So here's our shifted inverse variation for 1 over x minus 3 plus 4. They all have roughly the same shape. We just had a shift there. What happens if the number in our numerator gets larger? So instead of 1 over x, we're now graphing 5 over x. This didn't affect our domain. We still have an asymptote at x equals 0 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So again, I'm listing the asymptotes. Um, but now instead of the point 1, 1, if you plug in 1, we get 1, 5. Another nice point I could plug in is 5, and I get 5, 1. So we have that same shape, but it's pulled a little farther away from the origin. On the other side, negative 1, negative 5 and negative 5, negative 1. So it looks very similar, but notice the, it doesn't have the, those points 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1 anymore. It was pulled further away. And that's the effect of the numerator growing larger. Um, you can kind of think about what's happening with the numbers. You're still dividing by x, but now you're starting with a bigger number dividing by x. So it should kind of make sense that our graph gets a little bit wider. The last example we're going to do is... Um, just taking that and shifting it. So what's ultimately going to happen is you're going to be starting with something like this. And you, what I recommend is you think about the parent function and then think about the shift. So that tells us to the left 3, because we have that um, x as being, uh, we're adding 3 to the x, and then down 1. So if I take everything here and move it left 3 and down 1, we are going to get this scenario for our asymptote. Asymptotes at x equals negative 3 and y equals negative 1. Now I can shift the points that I originally graphed on the parent function in blue, or I could think about the pattern. It has the same pattern. From the spot where the asymptotes intersected, I went right 1 and up 5.
and also write 5 and up 1. So I can graph it that way. On the left hand side, left 1 and down 5, left 5 and down 1. Two, three, four, five. So that's just a quick recap of what we talked about today in class. Um, just so you could see the shifted version on the same axis with the parent function. This is a very, um, I guess, small family of functions because we're going to see ones later where what if there's like also an x in the numerator instead of just a number. So we'll do some crazier ones later. But these are kind of just the shifts of your basic, basic inverse variation. Good luck! Mm -hmm.